Good morning, folks. This is Stellarium, a free internet program trained on my sunrise view from Columbus, Ohio. Before the next sunrise, Aquarian meteor shower will be underway. The moon will be up there with them. Should be pretty beautiful. You are seeing Gamma Burst 130427A. It was the highest energy light we have ever detected here from planet Earth. Good article to go with it. And seven days ago, it ripped out of the Leo constellation. You might remember. This morning, Sagittarius pumped one out as well, but we will have to come back to space weather. Good shot here from NASA's Earth Observatory, capturing some of the fires in Southern California. Only seismic note of the day is a minor swarm returning to the Canary Islands. Quick look at the U.S. flood map with major stage levels present in the Midwest. Yesterday's Indian hail moved east and got no less deadly. The damaging weather can be expected to continue from Sri Lanka and southern India up the east coast and indeed including nations further to the east. Southwest Pacific, I see thunderstorm potential in northern Australia and northern New Zealand. Hey Taz, how cold is that front? The storm ripping through Europe is major. Significant flooding in France. Extreme weather caused death in Switzerland after dropping hail and tornadoes on Italy a bit earlier. Might consider checking your local forecasts if you're across the pond. Quick reminders, Central and South America, along with equatorial zones in Africa and Indonesia. Seasonal patterns leave you much better informed about your weather than we are. But rest assured, major events will not go unnoticed or unreported. Back to the Americas, one line taking warmth due north in the Pacific to Alaska and western Canada. Baja feeling a minor version of that as well. We could see flooding along the southern portion of the pressure convergence line heading across the USA tonight. Back to space weather, where the solar wind is tapering off, but still definitely recovering from a faster stream. The inductions are fading as well with a lower speed and density. The story of the day though was a double peaked M flare. I managed to catch that ultimate peak at M5.7 around 1730 UTC yesterday and caught the corresponding radio blackout over most of the US. Today's flares are in the C range but building somewhat. Now the first M flare peak came from the departing active region on the northwest. It hit M1 did not produce a significant CME, as you should see here on the pink AIA-211 view. Coming back to the American sunspots, get it? Really fat and too lazy to do anything, even when the answer is right in front of their faces. No, but in all seriousness, they have maintained their size and magnetic stability. But then we have the cresting Leviathan. This thing showed up juggling his sunspots and morphing in a major way. When you get that many changes to that many photospheric magnetic fields, they are going to interact and make a solar flare. Forgive my cutting off the main burst headed north and away from Earth. I think that surface event in the wake of the flare is far more beautiful. Soho confirms it was only the M5 that produced a CME. This will not hit Earth. Responding to questions, what you're seeing on this endless spiral is not the M5 or the M1. It is from a CME a few days ago that I said might give us a glancing blow while most of it went north. It might not even be recognizable as it will hit during a coronal hole stream from that central coronal hole peeking through the slightest of openings in the umbral field. The hole is earth facing and the solar wind stream will be here in two days. I'll leave you with the surface event that could have been headed our way if it had escaped the surface and some other shots of our star. Eyes open. No fear, it's 7am eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.